honored to be on this tour <coughs> ship. <coughs> Labor Day lecture ship here at Sixth Street. Uh, I ran into Brother Kenyon earlier. He accused me of being a restorative <laughs> preacher. <laughs> I take that as a compliment. I guess you saw my little beard here. <laughs> uh, whenever I come here, I refer to myself as being the country preacher because I come from such a small town, the city of Center Hill, and most, most of the time uh, people don't know about the city of Center Hill. Uh, so I refer to myself as being a country, uh, country preacher. I hope I don't embarrass anybody here today. I'm one of those old book, chapter, and verse preachers. There's still so much left in this. My brother uh, Bills made a statement of getting saved and staying saved. Now his lecture dealt with getting saved. My subject working together in edification deals with staying safe. Now, it seems to me over the years that we as members of the Church of Christ were good at teaching and baptizing people. But in a lot of cases, those individuals we converted, those people that we, we baptized, didn't remain faithful. Now, in some cases, the person might have not understood what they were doing. In some cases, they might have not been sincere. But in some cases, we were not edifying them. We were not giving them what they needed in order to stay safe. We were not giving them what they needed to do in order to stay safe. And that's what edification is all about. Now keep in mind the subject is working together in edification. A lot of times we think, well, that's the preacher's job. You have a new convert, and he's supposed to help them to stay safe. Or other person, well, that's the brother Williams needs to be doing that. But the subject is working together. The entire congregation needs to work toward that goal of a new convert in Christ, edifying and doing all you can to <coughs> make sure that they stay safe. Amen. And that is edification. Now, the time that is allotted to me, I want to deal with five short little points. The first point is edification defined. The second point is the importance of edification. We're going to give you some things that edify. We're going to give you some things that do not edify. We're going to give you some practical advice about edification. Now, first of all, that word, edification. The word edify simply means to build up or the act of building. To build up or the act of building. Now we're not talking about building a physical building. We're not talking about building a physical house. We're talking about building someone up spiritually. And that is edification. You start off after you get out of the waters of baptism, a newborn babe in Christ. And there is so much room to grow. So much building up that needs to be done spiritually. And that's what edification is all about. Now the importance of edification. <laughs> the importance of edification. Now the importance of edification is shown in Ephesians chapter 4, <laughs> verses 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 11 and 12. Edification is one of the works of the church. Edification is one of the works of the church. In Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 11, the Bible 
Bible says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what? For the equipment of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. <coughs> we have three words of the church mentioned. The equipment of the saints, giving the saints what they need. The work of ministry, both spiritual and physical. And the edifying of the body of Christ. Edification is important because it is one of the works of the New Testament church. Now another thing that shows the importance of edification. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we're going to verses 1 through 5. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is a chapter that deals with spiritual gifts. And the Apostle Paul shows us something. Even with the use of spiritual gifts, there needs to be some edification when those spiritual gifts were enforced in the first century. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, beginning in verse 1, Paul said, Pursue love. Desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue and does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks men's mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks what? Edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. He who prophesies edifies the church. The church is built up. The church is strengthened. Spiritual gifts were designed to edify. Now there was the, 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 the concept of revelation and confirmation, but if that revelation and confirmation didn't edify, it did not profit, it did not benefit the church. In the 12th verse of that same chapter, he says, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. So spiritual gifts were important but they didn't profit the, the, the first century church unless they accomplished the goal of edification of building up that local church. Amen. Now let's consider now some things that edify. Some things that edify. Now when you consider things that edify, we must begin with Acts chapter 20 and verse number 32. Everything begins with the word. Everything begins with the word. In Acts chapter 20, we have the Apostle Paul talking to the Ephesian elders in a place called Malice. And as he concludes, in, in concluding his statement, speaking to a bunch of elders, el and I, another thing this points out is the fact that elders themselves need to get about it. Okay. The elders themselves need to be edified. They don't know everything. Okay. And the word of God will help edify and help you. Now as he's concluding the statement to those elders, he said, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, in other words, edify you, and to give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Oh, we desperately need the word of God preached and taught today. Now, we live in a day where, where members of the church don't want too much hear the word. They don't want too much hear the word. Uh, we all excited about this election going on and probably a little election, election tearing is going on in, in a lot of pulpits. <coughs> but the only thing that will edify us is God's word. And it, is, and it has a promise of giving us an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Show me a church 
where the word of God is not preached, I sh and you will see a church where the members are not built up in the most holy faith. Amen. So the word of God is the primary source of edification. Amen. I submit to you that another source of edification in our world today <laughs> is the worship assembly. One of the most important things a new convert can do as far as growing in Christ Jesus is to be with the church whenever they assemble. Whenever they need to be there. Whenever they assemble. Okay? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 again in verse number 26. Now, I'm telling you something about uh, the early church. Their worship service were a little different from ours today. Okay? See, today we have the written word. Hmm? They didn't have it. They didn't have it. Okay? They had to rely on Revelation, the, the, the revelation of the Holy Spirit and having that confirmed. So their word and service is just a little different today. See, since we got the complete written word, we don't have to worry about prophesying and speaking in tongues. Okay? Some people don't, don't get that. They see passages like uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 26. They say, well, they did it, so why can't we do it today? They did not have the complete new testament like we do today. But notice the goal and the aim of their assembly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 126, Paul says, How is it then? Whenever you come together, each of you has a song, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. See, we, we don't do it in our service today. Okay. We have those five acts of worship, don't we? We have those five acts of worship. And we don't have tons in there, do we? We don't have tons in there, do we? We don't have prophesying in there, do we? But nevertheless, in their worship service, Paul says, let all things be done for what? Edification. Oh my goodness, we're living in a church today where people are more concerned about entertainment than edification. We're more concerned about entertainment than edification. We have some members who come to the worship of sin and say, well, I don't get nothing out of it. I don't get nothing out of it. To get something out of something, you got to put something in it. Amen. Just like my bank account. <laughs> I can't do much out of it. I'll put a few minutes in there every week, so it ain't that high. You got to bring something to the table. We can sit there and just work the service of the church. Bring something to the table. Don't just drag in there. It's no best about it. You wish it to go to hell. Game. Amen. Uh, we, 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 we make up, we got a pump pump, we, 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 we don't got everything, we are excited about the game. Huh? We, 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 we build it up. Huh? And when our team win, we're excited. And when our team lose, we're depressed. <laughs> but as far as the work is concerned, we say, we, we say, we, I don't get nothing like that. We need to put something in it. <laughs> Oh boy, now hopefully this is not true for you know, in this area. <laughs> uh, we got people walking in the worship services of the church, the, you know, the church without the Bible. They're not doing that down here, are huh? they? If you're not even bringing your Bible, Yeah. Huh? You should you, you, you don't come to the, the, the worship of the church to be entertained. 
You should come to be edified, to be built up spiritually. Okay. Oh, some members of the church, the worship assembly is designed to show up their new clothes. That's not the purpose. That's not the purpose. Edification is the purpose. Oh, if you would all the new converts need to make it their business to attend all of the worship assemblies of the church. Amen. Not to see brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, but to be filled up for edification. Amen. For edification. Now we consider things that edify. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 1. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 1. And something that is in short <laughs> supply. Something that is in short supply. Some new converts don't remain faithful due to the fact that they like what is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 1. Now, don't speak on another subject. He said, not concerned in things offered to him. We know that all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. Love or change.